Hey folks, Slash here on the Vintage Beef fan server. And what lovely weather we're having on the Vintage Beef fan server tonight, too. Just double checking real quick to make sure nothing is on fire. I heard an explosion as I was as, 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 as I was getting set up to record. And with a wooden roof and the vast insides of oh there was a lightning strike over there. And the vast majority of the inside of the house being wood, I'm cautious during thunderstorms. But everything seems to be a-okay. Sheep are still hanging out. Uh, what we're gonna do right now is get set up to help uh, our good friend Daughter out. Let's see, I just wanted to double check these chests here. Everything seems to be in order here. And these are empty at the moment. Oh, no, they're not. I AFK'd quite a bit last night uh, here at the sheep shearer. Just increasing the old stock. And daughter contacted when I, when I got on this morning to check to see how it was doing. I noticed daughter was on, so I said hi. And she says to me, do you happen to have a good sheep farm? <laughs> I'm like, I have the best sheep farm. She turns out she's looking for a little over two full double chests worth of white wool for some reason. So she and I brokered a deal that I couldn't provide this uh, service for her in exchange for a few shiny blue rocks. So that's what we are going to get set up for here. Uh, you can see I've got one almost full chest of white wool here, but this is after many, many AFK sessions here on the server. And so what I'm going to do to fulfill her order in a more timely manner is I'm actually going to dye all the sheep white, and then I can re-dye them rainbow later. Uh, I'm all full up on pink, though, <laughs> so I have all this extra pink. I've actually been turning into pink carpet just for the sake of storing it away elsewhere because I have carpet storage back in the house. Oh, that's magenta, not purple. So we're going to start out. We're going to manually cycle the system. And we are going to sit here and we are going to dye a bunch of sheep white until they are all white i think it doesn't take the dye yeah one white guy went through and it didn't dye that one so yep i'm gonna do this and once they're all dyed white then tonight probably before i go to bed i will set this up to shear the sheep and uh hopefully have a full order for her ready in the morning so we'll see if that works out or if I'll have to AFK a bit more. When I signed on this morning, I had about a chest and a half uh, worth of wool in the collection system down to my left here. And I only AFK'd for maybe eight hours, so I'm going to try to set it up to AFK for, say, 12 or so and see if I can get uh, both chests full of white wool in that time frame. So you remember that squid uh, tank that I built for purposes of collecting ink? It's working pretty decent so far. About four and a half stacks from this. Uh, it seems to work the best when I am AFK at the sheep farm actually, so uh, I should have plenty more of that tomorrow. 
And <clears throat> I wanted to show you something really quick. You may note, actually, I forgot to get my Ender Pearl. You may note that uh, I have nothing on me. And that is because I need to fix something. <laughs> um, my death's currently at 13. And I think last time I recorded it was at 13 and I forgot to address it. I will address it now. I think I only need a few stacks. I shouldn't need much more than that. Yeah, that'll probably be overkill. Um... <clears throat> Yes, I didn't address it, and I'm going to explain why my deaths went from 11 to 13. This is the AFK cobblestone generator. I believe that I have shown this before. This is Mark III of it, uh, and the system is set up so similar to the sheep farm and the AFK fishing thing, where uh, every time I break a, break a block, it th tries to give me a new stone pick, and if I don't have and open space for it in my inventory, it drops down to be recycled into the system. So it's the, the most um, accurate version of the system that I have used yet. The problem is you have to be very careful because you are swinging a pickaxe when you're in here, and you're doing it AFK, usually by you know rebinding the attack button to something and putting a weight on that button. And because you're swinging a pickaxe, you got to be relatively sure that you're not going to look anywhere other than that generated cobblestone while you're AFK. I have a three-year-old daughter. She came into the office, unbeknownst to me, and she made my character look straight down. And I dug... All the way down to bedrock <laughs> without having any idea that I had done it at all. <clears throat> so I ended up dying. Death number 12 was from starvation, from digging all the way down to bedrock. Apparently that, because I was moving, I guess, that depleted my hunger more than just standing here and breaking this block over and over again. So yeah, I ended up... Uh, I ended up dying of starvation, and I didn't, when I came back to the death screen, I didn't know what was going on. I'm just going to ender pearl down here as carefully as I can. There we go. Because uh, I want to fill this hole back up. But, uh, yeah, I, and there's some light here. I don't know what this is. Oh, this is one of my branch mines. <laughs> Excuse me. But yeah, I came back to my death screen, and I could not come up with any particular reason why I was looking at bedrock on my starvation screen. I thought maybe somebody had played a little joke on me and dug out the holes underneath me or whatever, but that didn't make any sense with the whole starvation thing, so I was very confused. So uh, I came rushing back <laughs> over here. Let's see, I need that, and then this needs to be a... Uh, hopper, that's the word, hopper, which I have here. So I came rushing back in, and I go, what the heck's going on? <laughs> Just fell to my death. Oh, man. So yes, I got trolled. I got trolled by my three-year-old, which makes for a good time. I think DOA was on when that happened. And I didn't think to record at the time because I generally don't record when the kids are around or when they're awake because they can uh, be unexpected interruptions, so to speak. So I didn't record it at the time, but uh, but yeah, that's why that's why eleven has become thirteen. So I've got things set up over here for AFKing tonight to collect daughter's white wool. And <clears throat> I wanted to show you something kind of fun that happens when the server has issues. Apparently, the uh, server was having disk space problems. The disk had filled up, and it was causing the player.dat files that store your inventory, your current levels, and all of that stuff. 
uh, and your current location in the world to not get updated. So I was over here with my inventory having been emptied for the purposes of uh, shearing some, some sheep later. And I log off, I log back on, and all of a sudden I'm back over in the house with all my stuff back on. Which means... <laughs> There's all my armor. Master sword. Master sword. Forest bow. Forest bow. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I'm just looking to see pretty much everything is in here. The only thing that actually disappeared, I took one ender pearl out of here. So I'm going to replace that just to test to see if it was in my inventory when I logged back in. So now this is what my inventory should be. And what I've got in my inventory now is duplicates. There is only one thing that can justly be done when one has duplicate. <laughs> when one has duplicate stuff. So I got distracted by the Skype chat. RJ is trying to claim to Olmahawk that his double chest of diamond blocks has vanished as a result of this uh, problem. But yes, there is only one correct course of action for this. And that is uh, probably going to work out right here. Oh, man. <laughs> this just feels so wrong. It is scary throwing one's entire inventory worth of stuff into lava. Whew. Man. That, even though I know that there's, there's the originals, the actual proper ones are stored away in a chest back over here. It is scary to, uh, to throw that stuff away. Because on one level, I'm concerned that, that I get over here, and I open this chest up, and it's like, nope, those are gone now, too. Through some weird, magical, Mojang problem. Whew. Nope, they're all still there. <laughs> Alright, so we're on our way off to the end to... Uh... Get ourselves a new Silk Touch pick. I was going through the ice harvest near my base, and uh, my Silk Touch pick broke, so we're going to have to get ourselves a new one. And actually, I don't know if I have shown the new Ender Ender on video yet. Doff created this. This tunnel always used used to head over uh, to the exit portal for the end, but now it also heads off to uh, Etho's Ender Ender 2.0 style design that he built on the opposite direction from Caleb's original funnel design. And it tends to work a bit faster than the original on here. And what's nice is that because it's the new etho design you have the ability oops, i want this one you have the ability to use tnt if you know what you're doing to speed up the leveling process so you can see it there if you're not familiar with the design it's two stacks of the piston pusher mob trap designs that you've seen before but they're not full width. They're not the full 15 blocks wide. I think they're maybe 7 or 9 blocks wide. Something like that. It's based on the... Oh, jeez. We're going to have to turn that down. Hold on. Ah, that's better. It's based on the explosion radius of TNT. Determines how far or how wide this is. So it looks like it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to there. So 5, 5. So it's 11. It's 11 wide instead of 15. And the way you do it is you grab yourself flint and steel, you grab yourself some TNT, you take off your armor so that you uh, aren't damaging its durability. And you can either from below 
because there's a trap door there. You can either do it from below or you can do it from right up here if you're interested in getting the ender pearls. And you just place TNT, light. And there they all go. Simple as that. Now we're going to try 30 levels on this pick. And hopefully... <laughs> and this sounds strange to say, but hopefully we don't get fortune on it. Because I... If we either get Silk Touch or we get, like, a good work pick that I can throw Silk Touch on is the ideal. Oh, I didn't get enough. I know there's enough up here. Come on. Get me to 30. Seriously? There. Got it. So let's see what we get here. 30 levels into this pick gives us... Efficiency 3, Unbreaking 3. Alright, well that's not too bad. And how much will it cost me to add... Well, if I do this, that's 6 levels to change it to Efficiency 4. And it's 12 levels to make it Silk Touch. So, let's go one more round on this. And I think that'll give us enough levels to do it. I love this system. I think this is an absolutely fantastic design that Etho came up with. And kudos to Dragon of Fate for uh, creating it. Hey, it's Daughter. So I'm going to finish enchanting this up, and then we're actually going to go meet up with Daughter. Her wool uh, order is fulfilled, and she is going to be making payment. Hello! Hello! Obligatory block and, and crouch <laughs> thing. So yeah, I, I, I noticed that um, that Snowshoe was helping you out with the uh, the wool pickup. Because <laughs> he left a very subtle clue behind. What did he do? <laughs> Snowshoe was her, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny. He but, signs yeah. all over my place, too. Did he? Well, you he know what? He slept in your bed. So I'm like, okay, then. <laughs> He's probably a little sign crazy, thanks to Drew's uh, 100 signs prank. <laughs> so uh, yeah. it's, he's got signs on the... And he has signs to spare. So <laughs> there's that, too. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if this falls under Ooh. animal cruelty. Oh, but, you know what? But well, it is cool. <laughs> It might, actually, because I just saw one of my light blue sheep die for some reason. I might have too many sheep in the system. I think sometimes they get, um, they, they, some of them push the other ones down and they drown. We'll just call that natural selection and move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, as part of my, my client confidentiality, you know, I, I, I will not inquire as to the the need for such quantities of wool. <laughs> uh, I, I will simply, uh, you know, accept your payment and uh, let you be yes. on your merry way. <laughs> okay. So... Woohoo! Yeah, I'm going to throw in an extra one because that was, that was a lot of wool. Oh, well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure doing business with you. Yeah, you too. Make my life a lot easier. I was coming on like twice a day sharing my 10 sheep or something and yeah it was it was going too slow it's a, especially having to wait for them to regrow their wool yeah i mean that's that's why like this system half the time they're they're back in the pen just eating like half the time it's like this when the system's on and then the other half of the time the water's flowing so yeah. it's not super efficient because after they pass buy the shears once or twice they're pretty much all bare but they the water is still flows for a while till they get to stop and actually graze and regrow their wool but you know i can turn it on and set it to afk overnight and you know f set it and forget it kind of thing when i get up in the morning it's been eight ten hours and uh yeah. and quite a bit of wool has collected usually by that point well and did you know efficient. what's that 
it seems it's like more efficient than anything I've ever seen. Yeah, well, it's it's a, it's a heck of a lot easier than having to to stand there and do it manually. That's for sure. Yep. I've also got uh, up there in the sky. If you hadn't seen, there's a um, the Sethling uh, ice farm design with the piston oh. walls and whatnot. He had done in a Minecraft video. It's like episode six or something, I think, of his series. So if you ever need ice, you could just uh, run over here. There's an ender chest up there in case you have to keep yourself touching an ender chest. Okay. And uh, and it's a ghetto ender ender or ender ascender system where you just look straight up, hold shift, and throw pearls. And there's string and ladders that prevent you from falling back down. Okay, I'm, I'm going to die because I'm... Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Okay, I didn't die, but <laughs> I didn't make it either. You holding shift? Um, yeah. Okay, you have to hold shift down the whole way and, and fire straight up in the air. There you go. And you just keep doing that through the gaps. There we are. Woo! And then you just exit off in this direction. And so there's an ender chest here. And the ice block forms in this area here so you can run around and harvest it. And I've got a surplus already built up of almost three double chests of ice that I've harvested myself that I just haven't found a use for yet. But if you ever need ice, come on over. This is free. This is a community build. Awesome. Thank you. Dragon of Anger had built um, the, the Etho ice cube trade design in a taiga, um, like in the opposite corner of the map from here. And then when the 1.7 biome update happened, taiga, like just plain taiga, no longer got snow. So the ice, the water no longer froze. So his massive ice cube tray no longer generated ice. It was just a pool. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. So uh, I decided, well, I'm right next to an extreme hill. So you can go up above 128 on an extreme hills biome and uh, water will freeze at that point. So I figured, well, I'll just build one here and, and mark it as a, a community thing on the overviewer in case anybody needs any ice since that system's gone. That's cool. Yeah, I don't touch redstone, so this is really convenient for me. Because <laughs> that's all I want to do for Christmas is just, like, be in my PJs and play video games. Wait. Sounds awesome. Have a good yeah. one. Yeah, you too. Mm -hmm. Thank Bye. You. Yep. Bye. Mm. All right, so let's get a little bit of work done on the biome project today. I'm going to take a whole bunch of this along. And we're going to go start putting a glass dome on, I think, this one over here. And the reason I'm picking that one in particular is because I'm pretty sure all of the connecting bridges are already established for this one. Oh, you know what? I just... Random thought. I want to make sure those guys are turned back up. All right. Uh, this should be safe. This is lit pretty well. Very thoroughly. So I've decided, and I think I mentioned this last time, I've decided that the best color is going to be gray for the glass. So we're going to go ahead and get a whole bunch of that going. I don't think I brought eight stacks of glass, though, did I? I brought seven. Genius. <laughs> Let's do that. And that. Okay, that'll do for now. Uh, you know, I should have also brought a silk touch with me. And perhaps some chests. I'll make some chests right now. Chests are a dime a dozen. There we go. We'll drop that off in there like so. So that is going to ha have an opening. This is going to have an opening. That's going to have an opening. The openings are going to be three wide like so. 
And otherwise, on this first layer, we're actually going to just follow the contour of the bowl as it has been established. And then, so then we have one, two, three is the opening, so the next block is going to go there. And we're just going to repeat that going around. And then we sort of start curving up from there. This part was actually the easiest part to plan because I was using a program called Minecraft Structure Planner to just generate a hemisphere of a particular size. And it gave it to me. The bowl was a little bit trickier because the bowl I actually wanted to sort of compress the hemisphere down to just five or six layers. And that was a little trickier to figure out and make it look good. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the result, though. I think it worked out well. So I'm going to continue laying this out. I'm going to try and get a couple of layers down of glass. Oops, there's the phone. And then we will take a look at it again when I have that done. So see you in a bit. So while I'm working on this, I figured this would be a good opportunity to talk to you guys a little bit about what's been going on lately. Let's see if we can get... Oops, that's... Oh, that's bad. Nope. That was that was a bad throw. <laughs> that's much better. There we go. Yeah, uh, besides VBFS lately, uh, there's been a lot of other stuff going on, actually. One, two, three, four. So we have a one, two here. Like so. And we start going this way. Drew Snowshoe and I have started recording a podcast called Dem Guys. Uh, I think I mentioned that last episode that we expected to have that out. And we did. We got the first episode out. Second episode is actually due on Christmas. I'm not exactly sure what we'll do about that, whether we're actually going... Oh, I hate Why do I only have... I never picked this up. I don't know if we'll actually have an episode up on Christmas or whether we'll... Aw, darn it. Or whether we'll change our schedule for that week. But uh, it's going to be every other week is the idea and the first episode went really well and was met with some very positive feedback so thank you to all of you who listened and uh you know gave us your there we go gave us your feedback it is very much appreciated uh, can i just go there nope man i am horrible with the ender pearls right now Aw, oh, come on. I See, I didn't bring anything that I can properly pillar up with. I guess I can pillar up with this. There we go. Let's see what else is going on. I started playing Starbound on the channel. That is a lot of fun. That is a sort of Terraria-like game, I would say. But uh, it's not really Terraria. It's... It's a different beast. It plays, I think, a lot like Terraria. Uh, but at the same time, it's it's got its own spin on things, I guess would be the way I would describe it. Um, it's, instead of being sort of a magic-based world, it's more of a technology-based world, and there's a a storyline associated with it where you're cast out or otherwise uh, fighting for your survival in a sci-fi kind of world. And it's a lot of fun. I've really been enjoying it. And I really enjoy the fact that it is Linux compatible. I really need to get some dirt <laughs> to be able to do this. But I've really been enjoying the fact that it's Linux compatible and uh, that it has a good story, and it's it's fun to play. Uh, it does have its little grindy elements, and it is still in beta, so things are changing in it. But so far, it's been making for a pretty good let's play. I think I messed this up. 
Uh, it's supposed to go five, then two, then two. Oh darn it! I did mess this up, and I didn't bring a silk touch with me. Oh well, we'll just do that. Let's see, and then it's one, two, three of these, and then we go two more like that. Yep, that's coming around correctly. So yeah, Starbound is happening on the channel. Having a lot of fun recording that. The Dem Guys podcast is happening as well. What else we got going on? Kerbal Space Program, as always, is a fixture on the channel. That's been going really well lately. We've really been enjoying the career mode. And I'm hoping in the near future to get back into doing the open source game reviews that I've been doing before. Because that is by far the most popular series on the channel. They don't tend to get a whole lot of views initially when they first go up. But they tend to do fairly well as people are searching out open source games or specific open source game titles on YouTube or just the internet in general, I guess, uh, has led people to my channel as a result of that, and I'm very thankful for that. Uh, particularly the Battle for Westnoth, which is why I had done it as a Let's Play, but then the Let's Play didn't really take off, so that I don't think I'll be revisiting at all. But I want to get some more of those in in the near future. And I'm hoping... With my Christmas vacation starting up very soon, I will have almost basically two and a half weeks off of work, I think, when you factor in the weekends and everything. So I'm going to try to get some more stuff recorded during that time frame that's sort of special on the channel. I also am uh, interested in joining Snowshoe, and I've talked to him already about this, for his uh, high pixel uh, survival, well, not necessarily even survival games, but the high pixel map or high pixel server uh, PvP map that he's doing. So, or PvP maps, I guess is the the proper term for it. So, ho looking forward to possibly joining him for that. Let's see what we got. Four on either side of that. So one, two, three, four. Uh, so look for those on the channel in the future as well. Three, four. And I think that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to continue building this up. I think you can get a basic idea of the shape that this is going to take. And it's just going to slowly work its way to a top centered over... Obviously, the center of the bowl down there. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next episode. Have a good one.